Enigma. I've lost track because I was at a Genesis concert last night, which was excellent. Um, but I have no idea what date it is. Anyway, today I am going to talk about... This is what we're doing in England, NCETM and Hubs training, which is traditional maths teaching training. And I'll explain why it is. Um, and I'll be trying to evaluate what's good and bad about this approach. It was inspired because this is the um, heavily funded and rolled out training in England. And the first session of it is free shared on YouTube. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. At the end of this video, sorry. But this is a slide from this session. This is from, where is it? Where's the timing on this? 28 minutes 56 of this session. I'll just put that there in case you want to read the name of the session. It's on the NCTM channel. And in it, that various options for teaching practice are presented. This one, A, is children are included through an open approach, which allows for lots of responses. B is this one where you've got your children in groups and you're teaching them different stuff. Hi, if you're watching, please say hi. If you've got any questions, happy to take them. And C is the attention is focused onto one mathematical relationship and the distractions are reduced. And at this point, the presenter of this training makes it categorically clear that we are not doing that. We are focusing entirely on this because this is the right way to teach. In other words, this is traditional teaching. What's right and what's being taught is defined a long time ago and a long way away from the classroom that's and the class of children that's actually going on. And it's really quite striking because all of this children are included through an open approach which allows for lots of responses has for such a long time been considered to be best practice so in this live stream i'm going to talk about what is good and bad about this and sort of put it in a context for people who are trying to evaluate it so one of the key bits of context in all the research are some articles that were written by a guy called Dave Hewitt some years ago about arbitrary and necessary mathematics. And what he's talking there is about the maths that's logical, necessary, and the maths that isn't logical. And that includes definitions, vocabulary, vocabulary in maths is not logical. Well, sometimes there's a bit of logic in it, but often you just can't guess what the name for an idea or a concept is going to be. And there's bits of maths that are really well taught by drilling and rote learning. And a lot of that's in the early stages of maths and in the early stages of mastering a new concept. It can be useful to learn elements of it by drilling and rote learning. So that's where this approach, the C approach, that the whole of the NCTM focuses on is absolutely brilliant. And I give it total credit for what it does. It's got brilliant STEM sentences for clear definitions. You absolutely definitely want to reduce the sound contamination and get children to focus on mastering that vocabulary, chanting that vocabulary. And you are better as a teacher deferring to what's already written down and supplied to you as clear training on that. So, for example, in the STEM sentences, they do definitions of mathematical terms. And they are done with clear explanations and drilling. Children learn to chant them and they all get the hang of those mathematical terms. And that's brilliant. Another area in foundational maths, you want your children to be able to rote count up to 20 and rote count back again as part of their learning of early number. Yes, we need to put all our ideas of early number together to make them really fluent with numbers, but there is definitely a place for, sorry, this, what the NCETM traditional maths teacher training does. And I don't cover it that much because it's so well covered in other areas, especially by the NCTM and the hubs. So they're really, really good for that. 
I've got a, a list of things they're really good at here. So absolutely superb for the non-logical maths. Definitely go with this. It's excellent for beginner and low skilled teachers because you're getting a pre-written way to teach maths. It's been well considered. A lot of effort's been put into writing it. It's much better than you could do if you didn't have it. And you're going to learn a lot by using those resources for teaching. So, and, and by going through the training that really explains why those resources are as they are and um, teaches you how to use them wisely as well. So if you're on your first five years of teaching or you're lacking confidence with, with your maths teaching, traditional teaching, pre-written schemes is great. Number three, it is working well in many schools. I've seen it up and running. Um, lots of teachers love it. It's working for their children. It tends to work in schools that um, don't have mixed year teaching and where they put a ton of energy behind it and a ton of resource behind it. But I am not suggesting that you need to change what you're doing if it's working well. Please don't ever think that I am. You know when your children are thriving. And if they're thriving and doing brilliantly at maths and they're super confident and these schemes are really working for you, then you tend to be able to build out for them and add in little bits of the other side of teaching, bits of problem solving, more bits of student voice, because you're confident and happy in what you're doing. So that's great if they're working in your school. Um, easy to access, it's really easy to understand what traditional schemes are and what the NCGM training is all about and the hubs training. And well, there's this one as well. It's kind of more government intervention proof. It's easy to write down and communicate to people who come in to inspect your school exactly what you're doing. And that tends to put them at ease and make them feel comfortable. So there's some huge, huge strengths to um, this approach C, which is what the NCUTM and the Maths Hubs are all about. Now, what's the problem with it? Well, the problem is that all of this stuff and the whole of history of maths education studying sort of points this way, that it's a really good idea for children to articulate their own thinking as they develop their mathematics. And when they start to do that, strange things start to happen. So for example, let's take a really easy idea, odd and even numbers. In the very first year of teaching maths to children, you may do some work with odd and even numbers. And it's only when you really slow down and start to listen to the children, you discover that some of them tend to be seeing even numbers as numbers that will split exactly in half. And all their imagery and all the examples they provide are that structure of even numbers. And odd numbers are the ones that won't. But if you really listen to other children, you find that they are always seeing even numbers as being exact numbers, exact numbers of pairs of two. Even numbers are numbers that will go into pairs and there won't be any left over. And when you get the class talking and you think about this as a teacher with them, you come up with this kind of structure where you can instantly see an even number looks like this. And you could do this with children going for a walk in pairs. Have we got an even number of children today? They can instantly see they have. And it marries up this imagery of a number splitting in half with this imagery of a number being an exact number of twos. And then you have such a deep understanding of the maths. You can instantly see your odd numbers and your even numbers without even counting them. And you can reason with them really well. So if we have an odd number of children and an even number of children, what will we have all together? And what about if we have two odd numbers of children? And this is 
uh, I mean, my Rebecca the Mass Lady stuff is all about capturing what teachers have discovered, where they've been teaching in this way. And it is astonishing. So they do shift, they do have to shift the way they teach. And I'll put a link at the end of this into a video. The fundamental vocabulary here is listening to children, not listening for the answer or the method that you expect. And that's a skill in teachers that we've been working on and developing for many decades now. And that's the environment in which these deep insights emerge and the expert maths teachers emerge. And it is this environment of A. I'll put a link at the end of this video to a video about listening to, not listening for, and the strategies we use because it's what's not covered at all by this training. Because in this training, you're always, if you're doing a bit of children talking, it's very short and it's all targeted at getting them to say what you want them to say, what you've already decided is right. So it's the opposite of listening to, not listening for. Listening to is all about this. And when it, you really listen to children, things emerge during the lesson that send it in different directions. And it doesn't matter because the learning is actually deeper and you develop these structures in the classroom. But it's not easy and transparent to understand. Remember the traditional teaching, it's much easier to access and understand what's going on. So the progressive teaching, which I've been trying to capture, works really well in classes where not every child has the same background experience in maths. They've not all learnt the same things. So if you've got a chaotic class where children have come from different places, this type of teaching where you're listening to them and making deep sense of what they're saying works much better. It's low floor, high ceiling teaching and it allows children to take incredible journeys during lessons as opposed to the NCTM approach, the traditional approach, where children are just focused on one relationship, one mathematical relationship, one step. That's all we're focusing on today. With progressive teaching, you're doing a huge sweep, low to high, so children can make much more than one step in a day. And the one step strategy assumes that all the children have done the previous steps. So if you've got a class where lots of children have got big holes in their learning, you're going to have big problems and this works much better. But in the schools where the traditional approach is working, it tends to be that the case that all those children have had a stable learning environment together. So the school has been able to teach them every step so far together. And progressive teaching is much better for mixed year classes. Again, because the small steps, if you're just focusing on one mathematical relationship, but you've got three year groups in your class, it's incredibly difficult to teach. With the low floor, high ceiling, progressive approach that allows every child to progress, even if they've got gaps in their learning, um, you can capture children who are at different stages of their learning and do amazing work with them. Deeper learning of logical maths. Deeper learning of logical necessary maths. This goes back to this Dave Hewitt article. And that is because when there's mathematical logic going on, it's really helpful for the children if they can express how they're thinking about it and take a journey from that to what the teacher wants them to understand. And if you're using structure wisely, then that is a very possible and powerful process. But again, it's not easy for beginner teachers. It requires training, it requires expertise, and it requires support to do this for a time as you learn. Hi, I can see more people joining. If you want to say hello, that'd be awesome. If you've got any questions, please do post them. 
Um, so there are two reasons why children learn more deeply. One, because they've connected what they instinctively want to think to what the teacher wants them to think. And two, because all the discussions that are going on tend to create a deeper structural understanding of mathematics in the classroom and a more highly skilled teacher, which I'm going to come on to, which is point four here. You develop much more highly skilled teachers, the expert teachers who aren't just following a scheme. They understand maths in more depth, more depth than any of the schemes do. And that's what I've been picking up in Cumbria and sharing with you on this channel. Those teachers who've been doing this for years, the things that they know about math teaching are much, much deeper and better than anything that's written in lots of sch in schemes in many areas of maths. It's much, much more efficient time-wise. If you are teaching one step every lesson, you have to do that. You've got to teach every single step. When you're teaching a low floor, high ceiling way, um, I guess it's like you're teaching children the maps of an area and then hooking the methods into them rather than teaching them all these methods separately and not teaching them the, math, the maps deliberately and clearly. <sighs> so hard to communicate this because nobody's been talking about it in the UK for such a fair, well, all the resources gone into traditional teaching for the last 11 years. So there's not this vibrant community that we had in 2010 where everyone was talking about these kinds of things. Um, the wider skills of the mathematician are developed with progressive teaching. What I mean there is that traditional teaching will teach children mathematical techniques. It will teach them how to add fractions or whatever we're doing today. But there's much more to being a mathematician than that. You need to be able to think with originality. You need to be able to deal with situations you don't understand and try and puzzle them out. You need to be able to articulate your own thoughts. You need to be able to listen to other people when you're not when you've no idea where they're going with this. I can see more people joining. Be lovely if you said hi if you've got any questions just shout up um so yeah the wider skills of a mathematician and where children where schools are really thriving with the traditional approach they do try and put some of this stuff in as well these are not totally separate and this culture and this background has influenced this and improved its quality and this is right some of the time and should influence this as well but uh yeah. The teacher develops wider expert teaching skills. And that is because these skills of listening to children rather than listening for an answer or a method translate beyond maths. Where you've got really experienced wise teachers, they're doing this a lot of the time across all subjects. They really know how to switch off their own prior conceptions and just listen and understand what a child is thinking and what they want to say. And that leads into better teacher and student well-being in these classrooms. The teachers are in the zone. There's incredibly powerful learning going on. It is much less effort than preparing these lessons all about rote learning and traditional stepwise that you've got a very relaxed atmosphere in the classroom because the teacher just so deeply knows what the children need to learn, what learning journeys they need to take, and they're on it all the time. But they only need to intervene where there are gaps. They don't need to teach everything because a lot of it just gets done. And you don't need assessment every lesson to check that children have taken the step of the day. You can come back and do that in a much more holistic way towards the end of the year. Have they mastered all the core skills that we wanted them to learn this lesson? So hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into why this isn't okay. And that matters because we've got 
it's been 10 years now of absolute i mean this is supported by all these books here and there's a lot more than you can see this was implemented yeah and so people who spoke up and said i don't think we should eradicate this completely the things that happened to them were horrific and that's why people are scared to talk about it but you know people who used those strategies to destroy experts in education then moved on to do it to destroy people who raised concerns about um, Brexit. So it did move on. But now you've got this generation of leaders in education who genuinely think that that is the best way to teach all the time. And all the people who know more than that have been eradicated from leadership in England, in education in England. And of course, in the maths hubs, there are some really brilliant people in there running some teaching who know, who see the wood from the trees and work around the sides of it with much more dis diplomacy than I managed to manage and therefore survive. So if you are in a maths hub, there may be absolutely brilliant stuff going on that's much more than is being dictated from the centre, in which case, enjoy. Right, has anybody got a question? I'm going to sign off in a minute. I hope you're all well. Just wish you hugely well as you struggle with the big challenges in classes. And of course, if you're new to teaching, it's always a big challenge. Um, and I'll put those links on at the end of this video and also in the description of this video. The key links that to the video about listening to rather than listening for. And I'll put a link to this NCETM video so you can see what it is as well. Okay, bye for now.